Alright, basically, uh, all I do to clean this off is I use a little steel wool and I just give it a nice good rub. Press really hard, make sure you get the edges, don't touch the board. Um, when that's, I don't even run it underwater, a lot of people do. A lot of people don't say not to even use steel wool, but because it leaves fibers, but I like to just give it a, just blow on it a little to get the fibers off. Cut this out. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems. Place it flat against your uh, copper. And you take a hot iron. Just kind of give it a give it a press. This is just going to get it a little tacky at the moment. Get it to stick. Make sure the iron's all the way up. Don't use steam. Once you do that, it's not set, but it's it's at least tacky. What I like to do is take a little wooden dowel rod and stick it on here like so, and then roll it while pressing really hard. You gotta make sure you do all the sides evenly. My iron's not big enough for. My iron's not big enough to cover all in one swipe, so I get usually the four corners here. These things are real touchy too, because if you press too hard, you're actually going to smash the toner across the copper board, and you don't want that. And chances are you'll see what I'm talking about. Once you do that, a lot of people will usually just take the tip of the iron and this probably, this could cause the smashing. Just kind of press it down onto the board. The whole idea here is to get enough pressure to transfer the toner to the board, but not too much that it's going to smash it. And I'm sure you'll sure you'll see some of it smashed on there because I never do it perfectly anyway. All right, I say that's about good. All right, the next step. to submerse the board in water. And uh, don't rush this part. This part takes some time. I would guess I would guess a solid like two minutes. Right after two minutes, lift the board out of there. And slowly peel that off, and you're left with awesomeness. You know, from there, oh, something. Yeah, I see a few black floaties. I think that was just some of the ink that was actually hanging off of the board. I don't think it was anything on the board. Everything appears to be just right. Uh, from here, I'm just going to add a little ammonium persulfate. That's actually going to start etching the copper. It doesn't take a whole lot. You can maybe add the equivalent of a teaspoon or so. If it's too slow, you can always add a little more. You should probably pre-mix it too, but whatever. Another thing I like to do is uh, stick it under a little burner. 
This will not only help you mix it, but it will uh, speed up the process. So I just usually like to turn this on low. And I don't leave it on low too. I'll let it, I'll let it warm the water up and then I'll shut it off for a little while. But uh, in this stage, agitation is a really good thing, especially if you're like me and you're too lazy to mix the ammonium persulfate prior to uh, etching the board. Uh, if, you know, if you don't have that, which I didn't know at the time, but if you use uh, two parts hydrogen peroxide and one part muriatic acid, which you're going to get um, usually at a pole store, That'll also do the same thing. You'll have to wear uh, safety goggles and all that, but I hear it works just as well, if not better, since it's well, practically free. So I'll come back to this. All right, this is after about uh, eight or nine minutes. You can see most of the copper is worn away. You can see there's still some spots left. It usually hits the edges first and then works its way in. Uh, I'm going to let this sit for another two minutes. It should be good to go. And then we'll take it from there. Alright, this is uh, appearing to be all done now. You should probably wear gloves. I don't think this stuff would hurt you that much, but I'm sure it's in your best interest to do so. That looks pretty good. I can see a couple spots that didn't go all the way. Not a big deal, really. Uh, not even a couple spots, it's just one spot. Um, what you're going to want to do at this point, rinse this underwater. And you'll notice that the solution, you might not be able to see it that well, it's turned blue. It started to turn blue. Um, that's just the copper inside of it. What I like to do is hang on to that solution because you can reuse it. I usually just keep it in a little bar, ball jar and I'll reuse this at a later date. I just thought I'd make new for this time. Uh, it's only good up to so much. You can't reuse it indefinitely, but definitely has a couple more uses on it. Alright, I've rinsed this in underwater uh, for a good 30 seconds or so. I'm going to attempt to cut this a little differently than I normally would. Usually I'll put it on a table saw and just whack it. Uh, however, I didn't leave myself enough space really to do that. Let's see how a razor blade works. I'm pretty sure too you can cut these with a uh, tin snips if you had to. That might even be a better method. Let's see if I can get this to work though. I think that's going to work. Just maybe just a few more times through it. I guess that wasn't terrible. wasn't the greatest either. Let's go ahead and try the tin snip method. Oh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I've accomplished what I need to accomplish. I don't think it's necessary to use chemicals. You could just take a little steel wool and just kind of rub the toner right off. That's going to leave the copper.
you can see now where the etchant had actually kind of come through and made it a little spotty. This isn't the greatest in the world. Um, I use a I use a really fine drill bit to drill my holes. You can see how small it is. And this is even big actually compared to the size that they're supposed to be. Um, this is so small with my chuck I'm in my drill all the way tightened it slides right in and out. What I do is I put a little tape around the around the bottom of the drill bit and then kind of smash it in with the chuck. That way it grabs the, the bit. So basically all you're going to want to do is just drill all these holes out and then when you get done with that we can go ahead and solder the components on the board.